Hi there, everybody. A video with a difference, this one. It's my, my, I'm going through all of the second site releases I've acquired. And I'm also going to do a comprehensive list of all the second site releases, irrespective of whether I've got them in my collection or not. If I do have them in my collection, I'll start showing them to you. I'll show you the posters and the, the art cards and books that come with them as well. But there are fantastic UK uh, boutique label. So we start with their website with Betty Blue as a release on Blu-ray out of stock now on their website, followed by Scanners Steelbook Blu-ray out of stock, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, Steelbook Blu-ray out of stock, the Endless Summer dual format DVD Blu-ray out of stock, Willard Ben two films in one set there on Blu-ray out of stock, and the first one in my collection we come to is uh, Take Shelter. Now here is Take Shelter. It's a box uh, set. There's a Amore case and a booklet in it. Show you the box first of all. Fairly austere artwork there as you can see. Very grey. And the back sort of suits the tone of the film really. And then the booklet that comes with it. I'm not going to show you the insides of all the booklets when I show them because there's just too much to show otherwise. That's the rear of the booklet, the Amore case, here we go. And again, the rear of the Amore case matches the back of the J card. And there is the disc artwork for Take Shelter. Sorry, straighten that up for you, there we go. So one Blu-ray disc, of course, in that set. And uh, I got this one, I think, on eBay, because as I say, that's out of stock on their website now. Tick Shelter is a 2011 American psychological thriller film. It was written and directed by Jeff Nichols and stars Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain. Now, the plot in the film follows a husband and father who are plagued by a series of ap apocalyptic visions and uh, questions whether to shelter his family from a coming storm or from himself and his increasing schizophrenia. Now it's a bit of a sleeper release this one, didn't get a big cinema release despite the fact that Jessica Chastain actually starred in it. Then on the website we have The Colour of Pomegranates, Blu-ray out of stock. The Changeling, Blu-ray out of stock, but I'll talk about that a little later on because that's coming back on Second Sight. Berlin Alexander Platz Blu-ray, Heimat Blu-ray and uh, that the next one in my collection, very hard to come by this one now. It's uh, a film by Rainer Werner Fassbinder and it's uh, World on a Wire. It's a German sci-fi classic. It's over four hours in length and it's a veritable assault course to sit through, I can tell you. But worth it if you do like Fassbinder. There's the rear of that with the J card on it, of course. And inside this you get again a, a Blu-ray in the MRA case, black again, there's the rear. And if we open this up you'll see two discs in this one. You've got disc one and then on disc two you've got the film's so long it's split over two discs basically. So it's split into two parts the film and uh, there's also features observing Fassbender, on set featurette, original broadcast recap, no strings attached, and the simulation argument. Here's the book that comes with that. Nice booklet, information of course on the film and the director. And that is World on a Wire. Going back to the website, we have When a Stranger Calls. Blu-ray, out of stock, I'm afraid. The Amityville Horror, but of course we did get an excellent release from Vinegar Syndrome on that, on 4K. Assault on Precinct 13, which I know a lot of people have, the uh, Second Sight release of this, Blu-ray. But it's out of stock on the, on the website, of course, a classic John Carpenter favourite, that one. Reanimator, very popular film, Blu-ray again, out of stock on the website. Asylum, Blu-ray, out of stock. The House of Drip Blood, Blu-ray out of stock, and Flight of the Navigator, which a lot of people like as a film, and that's also Blu-ray and it's out of stock. Now I do have in Bruges, but I never got the box collector set of that, unfortunately. Just haven't found it at the right price. So I just got the standard release, not the limited edition with the book. It's a great Martin McDonagh film, of course, and they, he led the way with that to using the same two actors again in 2022 in The Banshees of Inisherin. 
Now, from now on, most of them are going to be in my collection. We're going to the next one, uh, which is a really good release and excellent artwork on this, I have to say. And it's called Upgrade. Pretty hard to find it in the box form now. Here's the rear with the J card. And this is the first one I think I have in my collection so far that had a poster with it. And you can see the poster on the screen now. There's a booklet, of course, which matches the artwork for the disc. And then the disc itself, again, with the same artwork on it. In the rear of the disc. And then, of course, the artwork is also echoed on the disc itself. That's Upgrade. Upgrade is uh, on Blu-ray only. And there's a second site box release of that, but as I say, currently out of stock on the website. Uh, it's a good, good sort of science fiction film, this. I quite enjoyed it. Um, it does draw from other sources, of course, but what modern films, to be honest, in the science fiction genre, don't I ask you? That's Upgrade. Then we have um, The Amazing Mr. Blunden on the website, a Blu-ray out of stock. Nearly got this one. I was bidding away the other night on eBay, but just lost it at the last few seconds. Uh, that's a boxed edition as well. It's got a book as well. And uh, basically still searching for that one at the right price, I have to say. Now, the next one I did get from my collection, and this one is Under the Shadow. It's also out of stock on the website, I'm sorry to say. Uh, this is the 2016 Persian language psychological horror movie written and directed by Iranian-born director Babak Anvari. It's his directorial debut. A mother and daughter are haunted by a mysterious evil in 1980s Tehran during the War of the Cities. The film stars Narjis Rashidi, Anvin Manshadi, Bobby Nadiri, Ray Haratian and Arash Marandi. Now, a single out for a Second Sight Collector's Edition uh, Blu-ray and it also streamed on Netflix might still be running on Netflix as well. I haven't checked on that lately Here's the rear of the box Game with the J card and there's a poster in this one. You can see the poster on the screen now And then we got the booklet fairly thin booklet as you can see but some interesting supporting features in the booklet and we come to the Amaray standard black case same artwork and there you go on the rear. And the artwork is again is also on the disc itself. Also need to mention, if you're in the, U the US, all these releases are region B locked to the UK. So you need a multi-region player to play these releases. Okay, that's Under the Shadow from 2016. Next up is one of my firm favorites, a uh, classic 50s movie directed by Roger Corman and it's a great film and it's the man with the x-ray eyes starring Ray Milland. It's out of stock on the website but as soon as I saw this one come up uh, really advanced advertising I pre-ordered my copy. I love this film. As I say it's a story of a man obsessed with the fact he's found a way through a chemical that he puts into his eyes to see like an x-ray and the effects are a bit hokey in it but the film's just got that charm extended by the brilliant performance given by Ray Milland who struggles with the horrific power he's unleashed ultimately which backfires on him of course I watched this one when I was very young and the final shot in the film <laughs> did freak me out somewhat I kept thinking he was going to walk into my room later that night and I slept all night that night with the light on perhaps I was a little young to see it at the time it's that horrible last image uh, I'm not going to give away the spoiler of the end of the film, but it's a horrible image at the end of the film. And uh, this is a limited edition set. Uh, again, you have the poster, two sides, as you can see on screen now. Uh, the old artwork uh, with the original release poster and, of course, the new artwork. And then you have the Amaray with the same artwork, the second side designed and the rear of the Amaray. And the artwork, fortunately, a bit odd with a put the hole there but I'll not go into that in detail <laughs> the heart, what can you do the hole's got to go in the middle and like a polo and then you've got the booklet again very thin again 
Thankfully, they were going to move over pretty quickly to larger size booklets. And I'm pleased to say the booklets now are massive, absolutely hardback tomes, really. You take your whole night to read them, which uh, for some people, you get the booklet, you maybe never read it, but I try and read the booklets where I can. So that is The Man with the X-Ray Eyes. Uh, I really, really love that film. Now, the next one is a French film from 2017, and it could really be the ultimate revenge film because it's called Revenge. And uh, here is the artwork and box for this. I really think this is excellent. A nice glossy box on this one. And Second Sight has given this an amazing treatment. Blu-ray again, they haven't gone over to 4K just yet. Poster for this one, you can see it on the screen. We're not quite yet with the art cards. They did posters at the start and then they moved away from posters to art cards later on uh, in, the, in the release sort of uh, calendar, I suppose, for want of a better word. There is the Amore case for that and the rear for Revenge. And again, the artwork of the Blu-ray itself. Nice artwork echoed from the cover and the booklet and the rear of the booklet. The booklet's sort of designed always to open out as an extended picture, as you can see. And as I say, this film's not really a popular film, certainly not in cinemas, uh, but it was written and directed by Coralie Fargia and starred Matilda Lutz, Kevin Janssens, Vincent Colomb and Guillaume Bouchard. Now the plot follows a young woman who is raped and assaulted and left for dead in the desert by three men. And she recovers and seeks vengeance upon her attackers. It's probably influenced by I Spit on Your Grave, which of course has similar subject matter. So that is revenge. Now the next one I'm gonna show you is one which is an absolute whopper. We recently had the Screen Factory release of it, the Zack Snyder version of this, but of course the real, real granddaddy of it it's got to be the George A. Romero version. And here it is, Dawn of the Dead. Now, Dawn of the Dead is in two forms on Second Sight. It started its life in this massive box set here. It really is heavy as well. And that came out, uh, I think it was late, it may be late 2019, actually. I think it may have been late 2019. But this came out and then was, a, in the next year, I think a shorter version, a more concise version came out. This is massive. It has the J around it, really, as you can see. And the box itself is quite a weighty box with a lift-off lid and inside of the goodies. And as you can see, there is literally tons of material. This is where they started really first with this massive, massive hardback book with all the information, photographs and production information on the film. And then in addition to that, they weren't happy. They did the novel of Dawn of the Dead 2. So if you want a good read in bed. And then you've also got two other packs here. I'll put them on either side of my head. These, one of them is the CDs of the soundtrack of all the films. It's this one. So this is just audio CDs with music from the library from Dawn of the Dead. A massive, uh, a massive plus if you're a collector of this film. And then on top of that, there is not one, not two, but three separate cuts of Dawn of the Dead. Uh, the Argento cuts there, the Can extended cut and the original Romero cut, plus tons of special features. I can't really get it all on the screen, as you can see. Tons of special features in this. And uh, I think I haven't even got through half of them, to be honest, because I think the problem with something like that is you can't sit and watch nothing but features for three and a half hours. You have to have a break, and I had a break. I never went back to it, but I will probably return to it before too long. But it's an absolutely amazing set, and for a collector and fan of George A. Romero, never mind this film by him, 
it's just a wonderful, wonderful set to have in your collection. I think it came in about £75 from Zavi and various online stores when it came out. And it literally is a real strong box set, very robust. I'm very proud to have it in my collection. And uh, that is Dawn of the Dead, George A. Romero. Next up, we have one that nobody has ever really talked about on YouTube much. And I personally think it's one of my favourite Nicholas Rogue films. Second Sight did it in the box set, and it's Walkabout. Walkabout starred Jenny Agutter. Uh, she was breaking away in this film from her squeaky clean performance that she'd given in The Railway Children. And uh, it's a journey film. It's a rite of passage movie set in Australian Aboriginal, uh, of course, society, during which males undergo a journey during their adolescence, typically aging 10 to 16. And they live in the wilderness for a period as long as six months to make the spiritual and traditional transition into manhood. It's set in the Australian outback and it centres on two white school children who are left to fend for themselves in the Australian outback and who come across a teenage Aboriginal boy who helps them to survive the ordeal. And the boy is played by David Gullpill. The box set has got in it, obviously excellent artwork and a strong box as well. Um, just eking this out, we have um, the actual books. There are three of them. So we got the first draft screenplay that Rogue wrote. wrote. That's nice. Then you have the novel by James Vance Marshall of Walkabout. And then the whole background production information in the third booklet. No poster in this one, but quite frankly, you don't really need one with all that supplemental material to read. And then on top of all of that, of course, you have the actual film itself. This is in the Criterion Collection on Blu-ray, and it does have a slightly different set of features on it, but it's quite extensive special features on this. I'll let you read that a little bit. Oh, you can see the back of the Amore case there. And then inside, you've also got the walkabout disc with the same artwork on it. The sort of the sun over the Australian plain. And that's just absolutely superb. It's a great film. Thoroughly recommend you, you get it. Even if you don't get this version, get a version to watch. It's a fantastic movie. Certainly one of my favourite, as I say, one of my favourite Nicholas Rogue films. Now, next up, we have a sort of a horror thriller, psychological thriller. And of course, if you're a horror fan, you will know this very well. It's The Strangers, uh, certainly the best of this particular franchise. And we all really love films where there's a suburban house invaded by these alien strangers. And this for me is one of the creepiest. It's uh, filmed in 2008. It's an American psychological horror film written and directed by Brian Bertino, his directorial debut, in fact. And it's the first installment of the Strangers film series. Now the plot in it follows Christian, played by Liv Tyler, and James, played by Scott Speedman, who stayed at a vacation home at the time, is disrupted by three masked criminals who infiltrate their home. The screenplay is inspired by two real life events that took place, the multiple homicide Manson family Tate murders, and the series of break-ins that occurred in Bertino's neighborhood when he was a child. It's again a box set there, and I'll take out, uh, there's a poster which you can see on the screen now. And then you also have the booklet, same artwork on the booklet, again a very thin booklet, and the rear of the booklet. And of course you've got the disc itself. Always in black cases, never in blue Blu-ray cases, always black. And the artwork, pretty dark, as you can see, matching the cover art. I think it's a slightly different version of the same picture. That's The Strangers. This is The Nightingale. Out of stock on the website, this one, I'm afraid. Pretty hard to find to uh, spend a lot of money for this now. The Nightingale's a hard to watch set in 1825 in the penal colony of Van Diemen's Land, currently known, of course, as Tasmania. The film follows a young female convict seeking revenge for terrible acts of violence committed against her and her family, starring uh, Sling Franciosi, Sam Claflin, and by Kali Kanambar. And it's filmed mostly in English, but there's some Irish and 
Palawa Kanai uh, dialects in there. And uh, as I say, some hard to watch scenes in this, but it's certainly an excellent film by a very original director. There is the booklet, very austere as you can see, and the, the Nightingale in white on the back. And then you have got the art cards that come with it. You'll see them on the screen now. And this is the first release that brought us art cards instead of posters. And they didn't do posters again after that point. There's the case, the rear of the case, and you've got again the same white Nightingale in the artwork on the actual Blu-ray itself. Not a 4K this one, only a Blu-ray. Next one we come up against is one of the shortest films released ever by Second Sight. Uh, doesn't detract from how good a film I thought it was. And it was of course uh, aired on the Shutter streaming service as well. It's only 50 minutes in length and it's host. And it's, uh, it's only 50 minutes in length and it's long enough to be honest. It's a psychological horror film filmed as a Zoom session and very cleverly a, book of a, book, a group of friends rather get together on a Zoom call. But pretty soon they realise there is malevolent spirits stalking them and picking them off one by one on the face of it. This doesn't look good but it's absolutely gripping for its running time and it preys on our supernatural fear and has to, that the, the live feeling to it makes it work so well. It's directed by Rob Savage and in the features on this it shows a test zoom session with the cast when he was casting it where the director plays a practical joke on them and it really really works. <laughs> Very convincing one. Let's face it, uh, it was like a dry run for the film. Now in this you get uh, again the art cards which you can see on the screen now. All fairly dark artwork this. Very black dark. You've got a candle on the front cover of the booklet. You'll see what, what that means when you watch the film. And of course, the rear of the booklet has no artwork on it at all. And then you have the actual amore with the same artwork as the box and the rear of the amore with those features, including the, the test seance feature the director did with the cast. And then you've got the artwork on the Blu-ray as well. Sorry, I'm having trouble just keeping the light away from the, the glare away from that. That's The Host, directed by Rob Savage. Now, I discovered the next director on the next film, uh, really by getting this film on an ordinary Blu-ray. And then when I saw they were bringing a set on Second Sight, I thought, oh, I'm definitely going to go for this. Uh, this one is Raw by French director Julia de Cournoy. The whole film is in French, but don't let that detract at all from how good this film is. It's her debut feature, and it features a girl, and she goes to veterinarian school, and pretty quickly she succumbs to the strange environment they're in, and realises she has a cannibalistic nature. Now, the film has some amazing cannibal moments in it, very gory, uh, but will certainly uh, satisfy the horror fans, but it's got more under the surface. And I really enjoyed her next feature from that as well as she came out, which called Titan. So uh, that is Julia de Carnage Raw. Lovely artwork on this. Uh, again, you've got the book. Uh, no artwork on the rear of cover of the book. You have the art cards, which you're seeing on the screen now. And then you've got the Amore case as well. And there is the artwork on the Blu-ray inside. Raw by Julia de Cournot. Now the next one up, I'm so pleased that I was an early adopter on this one. Because as you probably can expect now, this is really hard to find. I think I saw when I checked on eBay the other night, this is going for about £105. It's Lake Mungo. And this is the rear of the box. The artwork on this is just superb. It's just really, really good artwork on this. And if I drop the J card, you'll see the artwork on the back. Sort of as a continuation. Now this film could have the ultimate unfound footage in it. There's the booklet getting a bit fatter, as you can see. And the booklet does an extension of that artwork. I'm not going to spread it out too much because it'll break the spine. And then you've also got art cards which you can see on the screen all blended all matched 
and the artwork continues on the front of the Blu-ray case and again on the rear with the features over the top and also on the Blu-ray itself. There you go, Lake Mungo. It's a 2008 Australian psychological horror film written and directed by Joel Anderson and it stars Talia Zucker and Martin Sharp. And it employs mockumentary style storytelling with found footage and docufiction elements using actor interviewees to present the narrative of a family trying to come to terms with the drowning death of their daughter and the potentially supernatural events they experience after it. I love this film. Really, really hard now to get it, as I say, in limited edition form. Uh, you might be able to, certainly you can't get it off the website, but I mean, you can try getting it from dealers or maybe even sucked away in a, a shop somewhere. You never know. You can just walk in and find these gems where well, the shop doesn't even know what they cost to, <laughs> or certainly don't know what they cost on eBay. <laughs> okay, the next one I have, uh, I prefer this to Legend, the Tom Hardy version of uh, Ronnie and Reggie Cray. It's Peter Medak's film, The Crayers. Nice artwork on this as well. Haven't seen many videos of this one being unboxed either. Until now. <laughs> there you go. And again, you have uh, art cards in this as well. Nice art cards. You can see them on the screen now. And again, the booklet. Thin, but nice artwork on the booklet as well. And the actual Blu-ray. Artwork again, emphasised on the Blu-ray. There you go. And again, inside on the Blu-ray disc itself. Again, no 4K as of yet, all Blu-ray so far. We are now coming into the very first of the 4K releases. And this was certainly to continue, not with every release from that point forward, but certainly many of them. And this one, uh, I think coming up next is a film that when I first saw it, because I bought it on ordinary Blu-ray, quite a few years back and I'm thinking I don't understand this film I really don't get this at all this is supposed to have been uh, healed as one of the best horror films ever made it's a psychological horror film and I I struggled I really struggled with it I liked the style of it but I just didn't understand what it was about and then when I bought the second sight release I thought to myself well hang on a minute I think I know what this is about now and it's the Babadook or Babadook. <laughs> I'm not going to say it three times or how many times it should be fit in case it arrives. Uh, this one, Prayers on Our Dreams. And it's a manifestation of grief itself. Really pivotal within the boy. And this psychological thriller has divided opinion to being not very good to being lauded as one of the most powerful thrillers of recent years. The set's superb. It's got the first hardback book uh, on a 4K set being released with superb artwork. And uh, it really, that's when we saw it for the first time. Just the level of quality that, that they were going to bring to future releases on 4K. It was a telegraph, really, for the excellent work that was to come from Second Sight. And I'll have a look now as the art cards from Babadook. All very dark artwork, but beautifully drawn. And then we've got a hardback book. And this is a great read, this. There we go. Ba, 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 duk, duk, duk. We've said it twice now, I have to be really careful. And then we have the discs themselves in a digipack case now, moving away from the plastic amory cases. And the rear. And the other two discs inside. So what you've got, your Blu-ray disc and a 4K disc. There you go. Babadook. As I say, on my second viewing, appreciated that far more. Loved the child's performance. The child just annoyed me the first time I saw it. I understood what was going on, so the child didn't annoy me so much the second time, the second viewing. And the actress, of course, uh, playing the lead role of the mother um, is Amelia. Fantastic performance. Okay, next one on the list is another psychological thriller. 
and I think it's probably for me the best of the franchise for this particular release, it's Paranormal Activity. Now, there was a box set of all the Paranormal Activity films come out recently. I didn't buy it. I'm not a massive fan of this franchise. But this Blu-ray box set, as they say, the first is always the best. And I like this film of all of them the best. I've seen about three of them. Uh, capitalising on our fear of the unknown again. It features a couple and their young child in the new house they have. And the fact their security camera in the property is recording paranormal activity at night. It ramps up our fear factor to 200% and we're strictly observing them through the cameras and the relationship that they have being tested to the full. It's a Blu-ray presentation only, but it's an excellent improvement on existing Blu-ray releases. It has a nice uh, informative booklet with it. I don't think you get this with the box set of Paranormal Activity, by the way. And then you get the it's fairly simple artwork on this one, back to the black, Amore case again and again uh, no artwork at all on the disc on this as you can see it's just the writing of the title so again if you're not a paranormal activity fan you probably won't put this one in your collection as I say I certainly don't want to have all the films in my collection but I certainly are happy enough to have the first one this next 4K release is the guest a nice nice presentation this beautiful artwork on this absolutely wonderful artwork and there's the rear tons of features on this one as well and here are the art cards for the guests which are gorgeous gorgeously done and an absolute whopper of a soft back book beautifully bound beautiful colors in this filled with information picture storyboards the lot and then back to the digi pack again which folds into three so i like the way second side split things up and that means that the films have room to breathe they've got enough bit rate etc on the discs and they're more interesting visually and audio of course is very good on them as well i think this is just a standard 5.1 not atmos mix on the guest the guest uh, i'll tell you a little bit about the film it's from 2015 and it tells the story of a U.S. soldier, Dan Stevens, who unexpectedly visits the Peterson family, introducing himself as a friend of their son who died in Afghanistan in combat. After he has been staying in their home for a couple of days, a series of deaths happen to occur. And the daughter, Anna, played by Micah Monroe, suspects David is connected to those murders. It's a great release, this. That is The Guest. Next up, we have this film. I was very taken by this one. It's called Swallow. And it's another one that's been overlooked a little bit, really. Uh, it tells the story of a woman who has a condition where she's strangely compelled to eat marbles. Now, she finds it exhilarating to do so, and she begins to consume other inedible objects around the house including thumbtacks metal figurines and batteries would you believe her husband identifies this and tries to form a cold turkey on her that ultimately backfires and it highlights the very well condition called pika i find the film fascinating and uh, nice nice artwork on this as well i love this sort of spiral effect on her face here's the rear of the case and again you've got all the art cards as you can see them coming up now and the artwork is also on the uh, the booklet, front and back. I love this idea here with the pills. You, when you watch the film, you'll understand what that means. And here's the Blu-ray itself. Same artwork, the spiral effect. And the rear. And again, you've just got very plain, standard blu-ray disc no actual artwork on the disc itself i do recommend this film uh if you can see it uh if you can get hold of the second sight disc take a look it, it was a bit of an education for me to understand what pika was about and of course in the features they talk about pika as well and that, that gives you even more information about this re very very real condition and i certainly wouldn't want to suffer from that attorney because uh some of the scenes, you know, where she's regurgitating are pretty bad. Next one up is Session 9, Blu-ray again. And this film stars David Caruso, Peter Mullen, 
Brendan Sexton III, Josh Lucas and Gavidon as a asbestos abatement crew and they take a clean-up job at an abandoned mental asylum amid an intense work schedule, growing tensions and mysterious events occurring around them. Now, its title refers to a series of audio taped sessions with an asylum patient that run parallel to the crew's experiences. There's the rear of the box, the J card. Films directed by Brad Anderson and written by him and Stephen Gevedon. At session nine, uh, there are cards with that. You can see them on the screen now. And the booklet, back to a thin booklet here. Uh, nicely done again with the artwork. No, and extended onto the back. And then on the Amore, artwork again, front and back. And the artwork is split over two discs. You've got feature and various features on disc one. And then you've also got more features on disc two. So they spread the features across two discs and put the film on the first disc. That's session nine. To say directed by Brad Anderson and written by Brad Anderson and Stephen Gevedon. Right, the next one up uh, is called Censor. And the clue really is in the title, because all we know about censors is they make directors' lives a misery usually. It's a 2021 British made psychological horror film directed by Prano Bailey Bond. A woman works as a censor for the BBFC in the UK, and she becomes obsessed with a certain video that she's censoring, leading to a strange quest into the supernatural in a search for her missing sister, who's since been declared dead. And I really like this movie and the cinematic choices the director made. Great kill sequences in this, especially the ending, superb. Certainly worth a look this, especially for the performance of uh, Ne. Uh, uh, Neve Algar as Enid. And now let me show you this one. It's basically again got a booklet in there. Nice artwork on this too. This is also available just as a standard Blu-ray because what was happening after this is they brought out the ordinary release of this without the box and the book as a standard Blu-ray. Uh, but obviously to get the collector's stuff is much better. And there our cards are on the screen now for censor. And again, you've got the Amore with the same artwork in the rear. And then you have again with this, you've got two discs, made feature and some special features on disc one and even more special features on disc two. They're very generous with the discs because most releases have the special features in Blu-ray all on the one disc and they're just squeezed on there. And obviously the bit rate of the film could be reduced as a result with multiple soundtracks and whatnot on there. The sound on this is very, very good too, um, even though it's not an Atmos soundtrack. It's just 5.1 DTS, it's superb. That's Sensor. Now we have this massive box set. This is literally the what everyone was talking about when it was announced by Second Sight. The pre-orders went through the roof for this one, guys. And my pre-order was probably one of the earliest ones with the HMV, I remember. And it's, of course, Drive. What a whopping great set this is. And what wonderful artwork it has as well. It's just superb. If I take this out, you'll see it's actually in a jacket case here. It's almost like a, a, a whole, well, there's books in there. That's why it's designed like a book holder. This absolutely gigantic book. It's literally like a coffee table book, this, uh, with the famous hammer on it. And it's packed full of stuff, full of photographs, tons of storyboard stuff in there. And then if that wasn't enough, you got the novel for Drive as well. And you've also got the art cards too, which are on the screen now. And then in Digipack, you've got two discs with this one. You have the 4K disc and the Blu-ray disc. And of course, it does have all the features on the Blu-ray disc. And that's Drive. 
So absolute whopper of a set list. I think it came out about 60 quid when it was released. And everyone thought, oh God, they're not going to be charging 60 quid for all their sets going forward. Thankfully, I haven't done that really. Some of the sets are slightly cheaper. It depends what's in the set really. But I think this one was really rather special and they knew they had the market for it. And they were right. The thing sold out so quickly. Uh, it's, it's out of stock on their website, don't even try. You've got to find this one on eBay or, or, or someone you know or someone that knows someone who knows them. Uh, it's, it, it's massive. So that's Drive. And of course, what can I say about the film? It's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant film. Uh, it, Ryan Gosling plays a getaway driver in it who gets involved with the criminal underworld led by Ron Perlman and Albert Brooks in a violent encounter in an elevator he saves a young woman which to a certain extent sets out his future path for him a stylish and brilliantly directed thriller it's a superb score as well and that is drive i think cliff edelman wrote the score for i believe right next up we have a film that did come out on 4k in the us on I think through lion's gate i bought that in 4k but wasn't overly impressed with uh, the, the the quality of it, and uh, neither was Robert Eggers. To be honest, Robert Eggers hated it, and he said, "Listen, second side, I want to do completely redo all of my mastering on this again and restore it all, and change it because I wasn't happy with the original release." And they they indulged him, and what we got as a result was this: the second sight release of the witch. It's a supernatural thriller set in the 17th century in New England. It's natural language, of course, all throughout, and it's shot with a natural feel, camera-wise. Anna Taylor Joy is superb in it, and the scene with a young brother being possessed by an evil spurt's also great. With a very much crucible feel, this film feels somewhat pedestrian, but we feel as if we're watching the past directly through a lens. A masterful debut feature, the limited edition set has a brilliant hard book and, of course, better features than its Lionsgate counterpart. And there's the book. Nicely done. Thank you very much. I'm so pleased you revisited this, Robert. And uh, I'm a big fan of his work anyway. And two discs on this one. Again, the Blu-ray and the 4K. That's The Witch. It wasn't too expensive. All oh, the art cards are on the screen now for The Witch. And as you can see, it wasn't too expensive. Um, I don't think it was. I think it was about 30, 33 pounds or something. It wasn't, wasn't overly uh, expensive uh, as a release. And that's The Witch, Robert Eggers. Right, moving through my collection nicely, we come to the next one. And uh, this, of course, netted its star and Oscar in 2004. Of course, it was Charlize Theron. And this 2003 release film is about the serial killer Aileen Wernos. She's a street prostitute who murdered seven of her male clients between 1989 and 1990. And it was executed, of course, in Florida in 2002. Starring Charlize Theron, who produced the film, as Wernos and Christina Ricci as her semi-fictionalized lover Selby Wall, based on the real-life girlfriend at the time, Tara Moore. Now this is a nice film. Uh, we've got again nicely done coloured art cards with this. You can see them on the screen now. The book is here. Again, extended artwork on the book. Very thin book again. And the Amaray. Blu-ray this, not 4K. And there we go. And again, artwork on the Blu-ray itself. There we go. Monster. And uh, she thoroughly deserved the Oscar. I mean, she was horrific. Her character was truly detestable in this film, but she certainly gives, for me, her career performance. And of course, it's directed by Patty Jenkins. And of course, we all know Patty Jenkins came along much later with the wonderful Wonder Woman. Uh, but this was her debut feature. So this is definitely a much must watch film. Right. OK, I'm just going to put that to one side. Can I get the art cards back in the box? Right. Sorry if I keep twisting around, but these are behind me now, directly behind my head. So the next one up is Dog Soldiers. This one again proved very popular when it was announced by Second Sight. It got delayed on its release, but 
glad they did because they got it just right. Uh, 16 millimeters this was shot in. So I was wondering how on earth this was gonna look. It's delightfully cheesy, uh, the, the second sight restoration of this, of course on 4K, and it's absolutely stunning. Now, I'll tell you a little story here. I accidentally put the wrong disc in. I put the Blu-ray in and I didn't even realise it wasn't the 4K. It looks so good on the Blu-ray. But uh, I realised about 40 minutes in that something wasn't quite right. I don't know what it was. I just had this funny feeling. I think, I'm going to go and check that. And I realised it wasn't the 4K. I twitched the disc and started the film again. Uh, I loved it. I think it's a wonderful film. It's so, it's so funny as well. And... Um, as I say, the difference between uh, uh, older cuts of this and older versions of this and this release is night and day, it really is. Uh, it's a great kitschy take on werewolves, it can't be missed, and the artwork on this release is to die for. As you can see from the front cover alone, and I'll show you the rear with the J card, art cards on the screen now. And then you've also got a big book as well with this, fairly sizable. And... Uh, You've also got, again, the now familiar DigiPack style with the Blu-ray and the 4K. I couldn't believe I put the wrong disc in. But just shows you that it's such a testament to the work they did, even on the Blu-ray, that I didn't think I wasn't watching the 4K, if you know what I mean. That's partly my fault. I wasn't probably paying enough attention. I normally do spot when I put a Blu-ray in by mistake, but not with this. Next one up is an old film and it's Frankenstein and the Monster. Now it's a 1974 British horror film starring the amazing Peter Cushing. So as you can see, I bought all of the Second Sight releases right through from a certain date onwards and I will continue to buy them because it doesn't really matter to me which film they bring out. They're all intriguing to me anyway and the packaging is really my, my main uh, attraction to these releases. Again, you have uh, the art cards which are on the screen now. You've also got the booklet here, uh, as you can see. And then you've also got the disc on the Amore as well. And the features on the back. Now this film is directed by Terence Fisher and it's produced of course by Hammer Film Productions. It starred Peter Cushing, Shane Bryant and David Price. Yes, David Price from Star Wars. Filmed at Elstree Studios in 1972, but it wasn't released until 1974. And it was the final chapter in the Hammer Frankenstein saga of films, as well as director Fisher's last film that he made. So that is Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. And there's art cards that signal with that one. Now let me just switch around again. I'll be able to go down to the lower shelf will make it easier on my neck. This is another one, uh, again an older film, but also a uh, great film too with Peter Cushing in it, and it's The Mummy. Now obviously it's a big horror favourite, The Mummy. It's been done a lot of times, The Mummy. This is the 1959 British horror version, directed by Terence Fisher of course, and starring Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Written by Jimmy Sangster and it was produced by Michael Carreras and Anthony Nelson Keyes, again for Hammer Film Productions. The film was distributed in the US in 1959 on a double bill with either the Vincent Price film The Bat or the universal film Curse of the Undead. And uh, let's show you the rear of that one. Okay, and again, you've got the art cards on screen now. The all too familiar book that comes with it. And again, the Amaray. Blu-ray, again, just Blu-ray, not 4K. Fairly standard, no artwork on the Blu-ray. So Second Sight can't surprise us, say, with these odd releases that aren't maybe uh, not, not normal stuff that they might, that you might see them come out with. Okay, so the next film is a newer film. Now I bought this as a blind buy. I was continuing my, my love of the Second Sight presentations and I wasn't sure what to expect. But I did see that Neil Masco was in it and I do remember Kill List. And I'm thinking, ooh, if this is anything like Kill List, this will be worth a watch, and I wasn't disappointed. It's a British crime thriller written and directed by Paul Andrew Williams. It's called Bull. 
Now it stars Neil Maskell, as I say, as the titular character who seeks revenge on his former gang associates and father-in-law to get his son. It's a contract killer, that's what he is. Ten years ago, Bull's boss and father-in-law Norm took extreme measures to separate him from his son. Aidan Bull returns to town to exact his revenge, one by one, hunting each one down a treacherous path of love and vengeance of biblical proportions. Now, this film has got a nice twist in it. I'm not even going to talk about the film because it's a big giveaway. Art cards are on the screen now, all very, very similar colour. The book's a similar colour to the art cards. And again, it's echoed in the artwork on the case as well. And also on the disc. Love the artwork on this. As I say, I was surprised by this film. Enjoyed the watch. Uh, it's not one you can revisit though because once that twists out there's no point but as a first time and only time watch really enjoyed it next up we have a banquet nobody really knows about this one uh, please if you do have seen this or know anything about it do say something in the comments but I've not seen anyone talk about this at all I was actually surprised to see this release coming into the Second Sight roster. It's a 2021 British horror film directed by Ruth Paxton and written by Justin Bull. Now, the film stars Sienna Guiri as a widowed mother, Holly, whose husband, the father of her daughters, Betsy, played by Jessica Alexander, and Isabel, played by Ruby Stokes, died by suicide. And one night, Betsy has what she believes to be a supernatural experience that results in her refusing to eat. And it was nice to see this newer film getting the full Second Sight treatment and the booklet and forms on the film, which I had to admit up to that point I'd never ever seen before, not even on a streaming service. There's the art cards for the banquet. And here's the amaray. And the rear. And the artwork on the Blu-ray itself. And there's the book. So that's one, as I say, it's up to you whether you want to check that one out. Uh, I really was on my collecting sort of stint with this, so I just bought it when it was announced. But uh, I did enjoy watching it. But again, it's not one I probably would uh, recommend as the best film I've ever seen, to be fair. Now, this one coming up, of course, is Boiling Point. Everyone knows about this. Stephen Graham gives a tour de force performance in this real one-take film. Running 90-odd minutes, he plays the dead chef in his own restaurant who's under pressure when his mentor, Jason Fleming, turns up without warning and decides to give a hard time with a major food critic in tow. Meanwhile, under the surface, he and a lot of his staff in the restaurant are cracking up and that culminates in a major gaffe with an allergic diner. It's a powerhouse, fly-on-the-wall style feel to it and it launched the career for its director, Philip Barantini. He's based on a short treatment of his own, uh, which he had written a few years previous. That is Boiling Point. Stephen Graham is the star of the show in this. And then you've got the art cards for Boiling Point, the book, and the disc itself again on Blu-ray. The rear of the case. And the artwork's pretty simple on the actual disc. Uh, I will probably watch this again and again because it's just absolutely exhausting to watch the frenetic pace that ramps up in this film and the fact that these actors are performing for 90 minutes solid. It's almost like a play being filmed. It's incredible. Now, I've come across Sean Baker before. Apologies for that terribly noisy playing. Uh, Sean Baker brought uh, a film to Criterion called Takeout which he co-directed with another uh, person. And this uh, is uh, his 2015 film called Tangerine. It's an A24 film, actually. And uh, the story follows a transgender sex worker who discovers her boyfriend and pimp have been cheating on her. The film was shot with three iPhone 5S smartphones, would you believe? It's a comedy drama and has received critical acclaim for its screenplay direction, performances and portrayal of transgender people. So uh, I have to say, I really enjoyed this one as well. Great sort of uh, themes doing this film. 
lovely art cards, all this uh, tangerine color, really. And then you've got this wonderful artwork on the book as well. That looks superb. And then the case, which matches the artwork for the box. And then the artwork for the actual disc is also echoed as well with the same treatment. And uh, do like a style, Sean Baker. I think he also directed the Florida Project, another A24 release, which just had a standard Blu-ray release uh, here uh, in the UK and in the States. Uh, but that is tangerine. Can't get that in the box. Never mind. Okay, we're near. In fact, we're, we're coming to the end. Nearly the end. Not quite. This one came out very recently. I personally never thought that this film would ever see a decent Blu-ray release, never mind a 4K version. But, second sight have proved me wrong. It's George A. Romero's Martin. Also known internationally as Vampire, it's a 1977 American psychological horror film written and directed by George A. Romero and starring John Amplas. Its plot follows a troubled young man who believes himself to be a vampire. Shot in 1976, Martin was Romero's fifth feature film at that point and it followed the crazies made in 1973. Now, this is, uh, again, hard to get out of the case because it's quite tight. A load of art cards with this, as you can see on the screen. A fairly uh, large book with this one. Nice artwork on that. Well, the rear is fantastic there. That looks great with the rosary and the cross. And then you've got, again, the standard digipack coming in three. this one. You've got uh, tons and tons of features. And the soundtrack from the film as well, which is really nice. Lovely touch that. And the 4K. And of course you've got the rear of that, which is also illustrations on there too. And I love the sort of the, the teeth looking like a razor blade. The very, very simple artwork on this with that white and red look to it. Did get a little bit of criticism when it was first shown on the Second Sight website. That was the image they were going to use. But I think it's quite, quite, it's quite nicely done, I think. So we're nearly up to date now. Uh, there's only one more to show you. Everyone has been going mad with this one. It's going to be, probably be the biggest Second Sight box set seller to date. And I have to say, I think personally, it's, it's a triumph. It really is. There'd be a US 4K of this released. There's also been uh, MPI, I think, brought that one out. Turbine brought it out twice. Uh, I bought the Turbine Steelbook 4K of it, which I still got. I won't get rid of it. But um, early reviews did show that this was going to be the, likely the 4K release of the year so far. The transfer that they gave us of the 16 millimeter film, a 70s schlock horror favorite. And you know what I'm going to say now. It's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm not going to go in length at this because so many other YouTube videos have done it already. I'm not going to repeat what everybody has said. I'm just going to say it's a triumph. It's wonderful. Nothing short of relatory. I cannot wait to sit down and watch it. I haven't, it's only just arrived this week. I haven't had the chance to watch it. Art cards matched perfectly with it. Fantastic 190 page hardback book inside here as well look at that you've seen it on other videos already and the art cards which are on the screen now and then the the, the fold out digipack again quickly just show you that you've seen it on other videos with artwork on the rear extended artwork may i add and i got i got the uh the second set of art cards because i ordered this directly from second site i'm not going to fomo on this one I'm so glad I've got it in my collection. Uh, so coming up soon, we have Picnic at Hanging Rock. I pre-ordered it. It's a pretty expensive set, $59.99 in the UK. Peter Weir's soft-focused retelling of the girls that went missing in Australia at the turn of the century, the 20th, 20th century. It gets a massive 4K treatment coming our way from Second Sight, bringing us a copy of the original novel written by Joan Lindsay. And the plot of it, of course, involves the disappearance of several schoolgirls and their teacher during a picnic at Hanging Rock, Victoria, on Valentine's Day in 1900. The subsequent effect it has on the local community, and it was a commercial success at the time and critical as well, and helped to draw international attention to the then emerging Australian new wave of cinema. 
And then I mentioned it earlier, the Changeling. It had a Blu-ray release from Second Sight way, way back. Now it's coming out in 4K very soon. Canadian supernatural psychological horror film directed by Peter Medak, who brought us the craze, and starring George C. Scott, Trish Van De Vere, and Melvin Douglas. Plot for this involves an esteemed New York City composer who relocates to Seattle, Washington, where he moves into a mansion and he comes to believe it's haunted. The screenplay is based upon the events that writer Russell Hunter claimed he experienced while he was living in the Henry Treat Rogers mansion in the Cheeseman Park neighborhood of Denver, Colorado in the late 1960s. It's going to get a 4K UHD treatment, an upgrade from the Blu-ray release, the novel, and as I mentioned earlier in this video, it's already on Blu-ray. Looking forward to this, it comes out at oh, $39.99. To summarise, they're doing some excellent work at the moment and we're very excited now to hear what else they've got planned for this year. They have announced already they're working on a Blu-ray restoration of The Hitcher. No release date's yet been set for that. So obviously they're doing extensive work on that one and they're not committing to a release date at this stage. But I'm sure they'll announce a release date soon and I will be placing my pre-order as soon as I see it announced. So it's been a long video. I hope you've enjoyed my journey with you through most of the Second Sight releases, covering all of them, at least the ones I don't have I least mentioned, and showing you all the ones I've acquired so far. I'll catch you on the next video. Until then, as always, goodbye and good viewing of those Second Sight films.